Journalism. Behoost.info, Ukraine. A group of independent journalists in Ukraine has been tackling corruption within the powerful elite. Behoost.info have been fearlessly exposing corrupt officials despite being subject to violent threats and assaults. Behoost produce hard-hitting, in-depth TV reports for the popular television show Nashi Groshi, Our Money, which illuminates the difference between corrupt officials' real wealth and their official income. In the last two years alone, their coverage has contributed to the opening of more than 100 legal cases, helped save the equivalent of £13.8 million of public money from embezzlement, and has led to the dismissal of over 20 candidates who are competing for seats in the Supreme Court. One report exposed one of the highest intelligence officers in Ukraine. Their family had Russian passports, despite war between the countries still raging. This kind of hypocrisy marks the foundation of Behus activism. They encourage citizens to speak out against corruption by informing the public they are making progress, but there's a long way to go. Behus.info's work is inspiring because they're inspiring others. They're showing people that it's okay to take a stand and that they can be supported. Investigative journalism in Ukraine is an increasingly risky business. The country has been labelled as the most corrupt nation in Europe by The Guardian, as journalists continue to be beaten, persecuted and killed. The team has been repeatedly attacked by bodyguards and secret service agents. Nevertheless, their essential work shines a light on the dishonesty of the country's elite. Even in the face of grave danger, Behus has started a movement towards greater transparency. The Centre for Investigative Journalism of Serbia the Centre for Investigative Journalism in Serbia is an independent group of investigative journalists exposing corruption. They stand out as one of the few independent outlets left in the country where the media environment has become increasingly partisan. It's one of the most dangerous jobs in journalism in Europe. Three investigative journalists have been killed in EU countries in the last year and a half alone. Many of the continent's journalists receive daily threats and some have been forced to live with 24-hour security to stay safe. Violent attacks have also intensified. Some of this can be attributed to President Aleksandr Vucic and his allies in the media's smear campaigns which portray investigative journalists, including CINS, as foreign-backed propagandists working to destroy the country. SIN staff have reported being surveilled and intimidated. Serbia's judiciary, police, health and education sectors have been labelled as particularly vulnerable to corruption. According to Global Corruption Barometer 2016, around 22% of Serbians had paid at least one bribe to these institutions. Lack of consistent reporting on these issues means that, all too often, corruption goes unchecked. The endemic graft is exacerbated by the fact that media outlets are facing increased political and financial pressure. While many organisations have shut down or turned to unethical sources of funding, SINs still remain strong. They hope to inspire a new generation of investigative reporters and now provide training sessions for young journalists and editors. The Centre for Investigative Journalism in Serbia is inspiring because they are at the core of why these awards are happening. Without freedom of speech, we can't achieve the things that we all work for where citizens are free and human rights are respected. Mahman Hussainov, Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan has consistently been ranked among the world's worst countries for press freedom. Power is heavily concentrated in the hands of President Ilham Aliyev, who has ruled since 2013. Free expression, activism and criticism often results in harassment, violence and detention. One journalist, Mehman Hosinov, has experienced this firsthand. He was first arrested in 2012 after condemning the profligate spending on the 2012 Eurovision contest. He has since been regularly interrogated by authorities. As well as publicly scrutinizing the president, Mehman has been informing citizens about the real estate and business empires belonging to the government officials. Documenting largely sensitive issues, he's risked his life for his reporting. He was sentenced to prison in March 2017 after describing abuses he had suffered at a police station. Plainclothes police officers attacked Mehman blindfolded and gagged him with towels, forced a bag over his head and sent him to a station where police punched and used an electric shock weapon on him. His identity documents have been confiscated, preventing him from accessing essential services like healthcare and education. He's also received a travel ban. 
Azerbaijan is one of the most restrictive environments for journalists globally. It's a really, really difficult place to operate. It's really important that we remember not just those journalists who have been able to escape, but also those who continue to be held there and restricted from doing their work. Despite all his hardships, he is still just as defiant. He believes that by sacrificing himself for his work, he's making the future better for the next generation. He said, I'm not here only for myself. I'm here so that your children are not in my place tomorrow. Mimi Mefo, Cameroon. Repression and self-censorship are on the rise in Cameroon. Escalating violence in the country's western region has been dubbed the Anglophone crisis. The conflict has caused hundreds of deaths and has exacerbated the already critical condition of media freedom. One of the few journalists working without fear or favour in this high-risk environment is Mimi Mefo. She is an award-winning broadcast journalist and the first ever woman editor-in-chief of private media house Equinox TV and Radio. Unfortunately, the station has come under growing government pressure due to Mimi's defiant line. The Cameroonian government has long been a threat to the press and has intimidated and arrested journalists, accusing them of supporting terrorists. Between January 2017 and November 2018, 15 journalists were detained, four of which are still behind bars. At the same time, the separatist movement has also grown increasingly intolerant to critical media. Journalists like Mefo have been caught in a double-barreled threat. Mimi herself has been followed home by mysterious cars, faced intimidation, online harassment and imprisonment. Despite being detained in November on charges of publishing or propagating information that infringes on the territorial integrity of the Republic of Cameroon, Mimi has continued to update her news website in defiance. Her campaigning has helped an imprisoned journalist receive health care and seen the release of two other journalists after they were arrested in October. Mimi is carrying out fearless journalism in a repressive climate. Even though it puts her in danger and she's faced intimidation, she uses her platform to try and educate others about what's going on. She is courageous in her commitment to the truth, journalistic integrity and freedom of expression. Her fight for justice in unjust circumstances is truly inspirational. <laughs>